I can tell you that Ross Barnes was born in the township of Mount Morrison. It was on May the 8th, 1850. And um, his parents were Joseph and Mary Barnes, and they lived on River Road, um, near where the River Road and uh, Ridge Road intersection is, just south of that on the right side. And the house is long gone. There's no, no remnants of it. Um, he was the seventh of eight children. And the Barnes family had been here since 1832, so they had a history here. John Rosen, he was one of the best players in America at that time. And when the National Association ceased operation in 1875, Barnes had finished with a 391 batting average, and he led the league in hits, doubles, walks, stolen bases, total bases, on-base percentage, slugging percentage, and runs for the five-year history of the league. So he had basically reached the top of the baseball world. National League was started and was formed in 1876, the same league that we know today. In Barnes, along with Spalding and teammates Cal McVeigh and Jim Deacon White, who was from nearby Caton, New York, were recruited to play for the Chicago White Stockings of the National League, which would be today's Cubs. And with the White Stockings that year, Barnes reached the, the pinnacle of his career, 1876. He had a batting average of 429, which was 60 points higher than the second place finisher. He also led in, not to get too statistical, but on base percentage, slugging percentage, hits, total bases, doubles, triples, walks, runs, and his single season record of 1.9 runs per game that season still stands. And you can see why, scoring two runs a game, that's not gonna happen for a long time. <clears throat> so anyway, Brian Barnes had reached the pinnacle of his career at this point in 1877. He again was with the Chicago team. Um, a baseball writer by the name of W.A. Phelan in Baseball Magazine in 1915. And I quote him, said, No matter how great you were once upon a time, the years go by and men forget. Ross Barnes 40 years ago was as great as Copper Wagner ever dared to be. His scores been kept then as now he would have seemed incomparably marvelous. And I, I think that's a great quote to be compared to Ty Cobb and uh, Honus Wagner at that time. And this history has forgotten him a little bit. So, um, obviously you can see that he was very highly regarded and respected as a ball player at his time. And I'm not going to get into the Hall of Fame aspects too much, but, um, or the nuances of the Hall of Fame, because it's uh, sometimes it escapes me of why they do what they do. But um, I always remain cautiously optimistic that the Hall of Fame will one day give him the recognition that I think he deserves. And uh, maybe one day it will happen, and we can only hope. We keep, keep on fighting for that. An article was written in um, the Rochester Democrat and Chronicle um, that coincided with the dedication. It was written by a guy named Bob Bickle, who used to write um, a regular column in the Democrat. Democrat paper. He was from Geneseo and he was an avid baseball fan. And that day Bob wrote his column about Ross Barnes and um, he talked about a lot of we talked about today about how good of a player he was and how Hall of Fame worthy he was. <clears throat> and Bob finished his article in a way that stuck with me and this is almost exactly 30 years ago and he, and he said that what better place than Barnes hometown to start a campaign and he was talking about the Hall of Fame. But he finished his article by, by saying this, he, and, I, and I quote him, he said, A 50-foot aluminum bat across the street from the 50-foot aluminum flagpole honoring Francis Bellamy, the Mount Marsh native who wrote the Pledge of Allegiance, is an idea whose time will never come. But how about a Ross Barnes Award for the best high school baseball player in Livingston County, or a Ross Barnes Youth League? Something, anything. That's how he finished it. Well, today, 30 years later, it's become a reality, so I'm, th I'm thankful for that. So, so let's uh, let's see what we got, okay? And, and there's writing on both sides, and I'm sure you're going to be pleased with it because it's really a nice testament.